Hi and welcome to Living Your Kick-Ass Life, where I talk to people about doing just that, how they did just that, began to live their kick-ass life. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nussbaum, America's kick-ass coach and the owner of Empowerment Coaching, clinical psychologist with almost 30 years experience, and I help frazzled business owners and entrepreneurs and others to overcome their overwhelm so they can enjoy their life a little more, and I'm going to click to add my guest for today, who is a soul coach, an energy healer, and a medium, and I think you're going to have a great time. There she is. Hey, Robin. Hi, Bonnie. Good afternoon. Wonderful. So I was just introducing you, and for those of you who think you might know someone else who would be interested in hearing what Robin and I are going to be talking about, basically how she went from living a very successful but not that satisfying life to moving more into who she really is as a person and living that kick-ass life. If you can think of anybody that you know, hey, Len, who would be interested in hearing what Robin is going to be talking about, please share this video with them now so that they have an opportunity to watch us also. So welcome to the show, Robin. I'm so excited you're here. Thanks, Bonnie. This is fun. Glad to be with you this afternoon. Awesome, awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about you? Like, what, what was your pre-kick-ass life like? You know, um, I've never had a job that I didn't love. But I, when I was very little, I uh, was highly intuitive, and people didn't like that. People were very uncomfortable with me. And I learned very early to squelch that part of me to squelch the part that knew things that I couldn't understand, understand how I knew. And so I strove um, to be normal. And I decided that I was going to be as successful as possible so I could pass for normal ah. because people felt uncomfortable with my gifts and my ability to understand what was going on with them when they never said anything. Um, so I had my own company for over 20 years. And I was also um, in the corporate world as a communications director and very, very successful in both instances. And then about three years ago, and, and on the side, I was doing, uh, I got trained in uh, hands-on healing. I also had a lot of training in consciousness uh, awareness. And, and yet I kept that to the side. I didn't tell a lot of people about ah. that. And about three years ago, um, my corporate job uh, had a change of management and I really saw that there was no longer a place for me, and yet there was nowhere else to go. And at that time, I got the message loud and clear that the universe was not going to allow me to avoid doing my true Ooh. work as a healer Ooh. and a coach. So how, did that feel and, for you? Um, how did that feel for you to be getting that come to Jesus message? <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Come to Jesus was about what it, what it was. It was so scary because the biggest problem that I had was my own fear. I was terrified. I still thought people wouldn't accept me. And um, I, I got a telephone call from a woman who was managing a spiritualist camp. And she said, I hear that you're intuitive and you're a phenomenal reader. Would you come and interview with me and possibly work for me this summer? And I thought, oh my gosh, if I do that, I'll never be able to go back to a normal life. No, you're going to be out. I'll never be you're able be to outed. get a People real job. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. So and I, I thought, you, you know, felt. I don't have anything to lose. Tell us about the fear that you felt, because I think that's I'm something sorry. that really keeps people from stepping up is that fear. How are you experiencing it? How did you feel it? Bonnie, I, I went stupid. Uh, people would ask me to talk about it and I couldn't even talk about it. I didn't even know how to describe what I did. Um, and I was afraid that whatever I said, they wouldn't believe me or understand. And I would just sound like I was wacky. Wow. Uh, like somebody who believed in aliens yep. or something. Um, so it sounds like you're tapping back into uh, that little kid feeling when you, when you initially Yes, started. absolutely. I was... I was still that little one. I was still that teenager who people thought was too weird. And they, I mean, I felt shunned. I felt uh, ostracized. And so I hid that part of uh. me. And every once in a while, something would blurt out. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't, I, I couldn't control it. But I tried very hard to keep that part of myself under wraps. And, and when I went to interview, I felt 
that it was as normal as I could ever imagine. And, um, and she hired me on the spot and I worked there that summer. And the very, very first people who came to me, it was so spectacular. And I felt so much like I had come home that I knew I was in the right place and I had to do this for the rest of my life. Wow. So taking that risk really had an impact. Oh, looks like you froze up there, Robin. Oh, oh there we go. You're back. Something just stopped. Okay. Yep. I also felt like I no longer wondered what I was going to do when I grew up. Yes, yes. So walking through that fear, like, that really intense fear, the outcome was spectacular. But boy, walking through that yes. fear, I imagine, was very difficult. Yes. A lot of people who come to me uh, come to me with a presentation of depression and anxiety and fear and not really knowing what to do with their life, feeling like something's off track. And almost always those people have some uh, some element of high sense perception or deep intuition that they don't may, may not recognize themselves, don't know what to do with, and they may have been hiding it themselves, so, almost to a person. Okay, so let's tap My our audience have, here. Those of you who are watching, put something in the feed about, have you experienced any of those things? Have you struggled with depression? Do you struggle with anxiety? How does it sound to you to hear that Robin's saying what it actually might be is your higher sensory abilities pushing to get out and you haven't allowed them to yet? Tell us what's going on with you about that. We'd love to, to hear. So Robin, when someone comes to you and that's how they're presenting, how do you work with them? What do you what do? You do? Um, I'm a hands-on healer. I studied with Barbara Brennan for almost three years. Um, I've had a lot of consciousness training. And so what I do is, first of all, talk with them to see exactly what's going on and listen between their words, really using my own intuitive um, nature to, to listen to what their body is saying to me and what their energy field is saying to me and where their energy, see and feel where their energy is blocked and then let them know what I'm perceiving, and then let them know how I feel we should proceed to start opening that up, to open the flow of energy, to help them be comfortable with themselves, connect back into their own intuitive guidance and their own spiritual connections, their own divine connections, so that they don't need somebody like me. Gotcha. Because everybody can do this for themselves. Absolutely. Sometimes when we get disconnected, we need somebody to help us find our way. It's like we need somebody to hold the flashlight for right. us so that we can get back there Right. Ourselves. But what you're saying, and I wholeheartedly agree, is that we're not the guru. We're merely holding space and, and creating a, a container within which they can discover their own gifts. Yes. Not only that, but also holding open that container and helping them hear the spirit messages, helping them receive the spirit messages that they don't yet know really how to receive or how to recognize and help them help train them to hear that for themselves, to see that for themselves so that they then have access. We are just the conduit Absolutely. for them finding their way back. To agreed. Themselves. Agreed. So when, when you're working with somebody, how does the information typically come to you? I heard you say um, what you see and what you feel. Can you talk a little bit about what your experience of being that channel is like? Bonnie, I've done it so long and I've had so much experience with it. I, I get it in all different ways. Sometimes I even smell <laughs> things. Um, I get information through all knowing, through packages of information. Uh, I can, uh, when I raise my vibration, I can see in the energy field, I can, I can watch the energy flow. I hear messages not only from in that person's energy field, but also from spirit. Um, so I get that, those messages many, many different ways. I also am able to hear their body, what their body is really trying to say. It doesn't come in words, it comes in sensations, and it comes in uh, a mirroring of uh, vibration within my own body. And then I interpret that in words and even help them by, uh, by directing energy within their field to, 
to soften what's blocking and to help encourage the flow to go in a more natural, healthy, positive way. Wonderful, wonderful. Is that actually your yeah, question? Yeah, yes. So can you give us a couple of examples? And I'm obviously not sharing someone's personal details, but can you give us like an overview of someone you've helped in the past and how that, that process unfolded? Yes. Um, uh, there was a young woman whom I had known since she was a little girl. And um, she came to me um, and I was, I, I was so touched that she, knowing me all of her life, then came to me when she was feeling despair and depression. She had um, an, uh, an advanced degree and she had what looked like the plum job in her field. And she was so unhappy. And she'd had several jobs in her field and none of them had really fulfilled her the way that she thought they would. So she kept going for the better and better jobs. And finally she was there and it still was so dissatisfying. Right. She'd had some disastrous uh, relationships. Um, she had trouble with men taking advantage of her and cheating on her. And um, she also had some difficulties in her relationships with her parents. Okay. And that bothered her because she was afraid if her parents died, they might die still with that blockage in the way. And so we worked together. The first time uh, that we talked, I could see that she needed about three months worth of contact with me every other week at the very most. Um, and, uh, and we would start bringing her into awareness of what her own self-talk was and the stories that she had uh, put in place that she thought were true, that were really just stories that she made up around what had happened for her. Help her um, I helped her get in touch with some of the things that had happened when she was younger that she had totally forgotten that really she still was playing out, still trying to get particular attention or affirmation from her parents that they really did not have the capacity in either case to give her. So we had to make her aware of that, help her become aware of that, and then help her understand how she needed to get that for herself. It was never gonna come from her right. parents. And to make peace with the fact that her parents were who they are, are who they are, and to love them for that, rather than love them for what she wanted them right. to be, uh, which is a conditional state. Um, and through unraveling all of that, I could see where she had really um, uh, shut herself off from, from potential within her work environment, and that she was really mismatched in the jobs that she had chosen, wow. that she needed many more uh, contacts. And she really what she should focus because she was so good with numbers. And yet, as good as she was with numbers, she's phenomenal with people.